for the edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. I'm just hopping over from the live stream from uh, YouTube. I was going over the boxing and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> and now we're here to talk about the Phillies. Game one, wild card series against the Marlins tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then talking about the Eagles and their big thriller victory over the Commanders, formerly known as the Washington Foreskins. A big win, 34 to 31. So a lot to talk about in Philly sports it is Red October. Red October is upon us in the land of of gangrene. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know how Christmas colors are are green and red. That's that's what it's it's like right now. It feels like Christmas in Philadelphia, between the Eagles being four and zero and the Phillies about to start what we hope to be another World Series run run against the Marlins tonight. So let's go ahead and get into the Eagles real quick first. Um, Eagles 34-31 win over the Commanders on Sunday, and they got it done. It, it wasn't pretty. It was ugly at times, but we, we found a way to get the victory. We were down early in the game, and we came out, cleaned up some things. A.J. Brown went the hell off. He had the, the game, what would have been the game winning, winning touchdown in the fourth quarter, and then the Commanders were able to come back and tie it up at 31-31 again. And look, hats off to Sam Howell, man. He was running around. At some, at one point, man, it, it probably would have been better putting a spy on his ass, man, because he was just getting out of sacks left and right. He got sacked a lot, but man, that one sack that he got out of Jalen Carter's grasp on, very impressive. But got to overtime, and then Sam Howell, I think he hits Terry McLaurin on the sideline for what would have been a huge gain. But I think it was Reed Blankenship. Puts his arms out, and the cleat, the back of the cleat comes down on the arm, and the front of the cleat seems like it comes down right on the white line. And that such a controversial call. And that was one that was a game changer because they weren't able to convert and get points on that drive, and then the Eagles come back on the next drive, and DeAndre Swift, another great game, you know, has a big gain on that drive, and then puts Jake. Elliott into field goal range, and we all know Jake. He's money, man. He's money. I think a 54-yard field goal, game. 34-31. Give us that, man. 4-0 on top of the division, and we needed that win because the Cowgirls, they came back, and, and Zabe, I told you they was going to smoke them boys, and boy, did them, they smoked them boys. And Patriots, they got rolled up like a Philly blunt. They got rolled up. They, they got smoked. Um, and I, I saw that coming. Look, I don't know what happened last week against the Cardinals, but you know what? The Cardinals, I think Josh Dobbs, he's he's just getting things done with his legs, and he he's just progressed a little bit as a, a quarterback, more so than the league or any of us anticipated because he just did the same stuff to a really, really tough 49ers defense yesterday. And they, they almost ended up beating them dudes. If it wasn't for Christian McCaffrey absolutely going off in that game, uh, it, it it could have gone the other way for them. So Josh Dobbs, he did damage against the 49ers. He did damage against the Cowboys. Um, he, he's just playing very well. So I thought the Cowboys would come back and win, and he did. They they smacked him like I thought they would. Uh, we got the Commanders another loss, so that's good. And then the, the Giants, <laughs> trash, garbage, hot doo-doo. I don't even know where the hell their season is headed at this point, but it ain't up. That that much I can tell you. It ain't going that way. It's, it's going sideways, down, vert, diagonal. They, they, they're they all over the place. They can't even find their way. They can't even, <laughs> they can't do anything right. So we still have dominance over the division, so that's great. Let me know what you guys think about the win yesterday. Um, and then the Raiders, <sighs> 24-17 loss against the Chargers, and we were getting our asses kicked early on. I, I, it was hard to watch that game early on, just like it was hard to watch the game we had against the Steelers early on. But, you know, our rookie quarterback, I, I think it's time to pass the reins over to him and just allow him to develop. Similar to the way that Doug Peterson passed over the reins to Donovan McNabb, I think about... It might have been four to five games in. I don't remember. Back in 1999. And, hey, 
we weren't going to win that season, season, obviously, but it was clear that he wasn't the the bridge gap option. So you might as well just jump, throw the young man in there and and uh, get this thing going earlier on than expected. Same thing with with, with um, the Raiders. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo, we wanted more out of him, but it is what it is, bro. Our, our rookie man, he he showed it. He showed me a lot in in preseason and. He did some good things yesterday, and I want to see him progress moving forward. I, I really do. All right, because once you are able to open up the offense a little bit, then you give you gave Josh Jacobs some more room to run, and you, you saw some good things happen. Now you just have to keep building on those things. The defense, after really giving up a lot of points early on, they tightened up in that second half. So you want to see things progress on both sides of the ball slowly but surely. Unfortunately, Chandler Jones got released. I don't know what the hell was going on with that situation. You know, he's saying one thing, the team's saying another thing, and then, you know, social media is telling you a third thing, and Chandler's on social media and all. I, I don't know, bro. That 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 game plan to have Chandler Jones matched up with Max Crosby did not work out very well. But, we, we you know, seventh overall pick. You know, give him a chance to 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 grow and be be able to team him team him up with Max Crosby for the next four or five years, right? So, it's a painful process. I understand that, but as an Eagles fan, I've been through it. I, I've been through it with Andy Reid. Nineteen ninety nine comes in and you have that Ray Rhodes squad, a lot of great defensive players, but nobody on offense, and you have to spend a year of growing pains. But you go out and you get a piece here in free agency, like a John Runyon. Then you go ahead and get a piece in the draft, Donovan McNabb. Then you go ahead and start building around those guys. The Raiders should be taking notes from the Eagles of the late 90s, early 2000s, of the Patriots of the late 90s and early 2000s, how they built their dynasty, love them or hate them. Look at the things that they did, the patience that it took to get to where they're at, and follow that blueprint. The Bengals. You look at the Bengals now, and they're competitive. I know they're struggling this year, but the last two, three years, they've been highly competitive because you got Joe Burrow, you got Jamar Chase, then you build up that defense slowly but surely, and then even without an offensive line, overnight, they became contenders. So you have to steps, small baby steps. Don't try to run before you crawl. So let me know what you guys think about, you know, NFL uh action this weekend and what the Eagles and the Raiders were able to do. And let's go ahead and segue over to the Philadelphia Phillies. Red October is upon us. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight, the Phillies face off with the Miami Marlins. Let's go ahead and look at the playoff rosters and, and, and what we expect going into this game. So, uh, Phillies, um, nice year, man. Number four seed, 90 wins, 72 losses. The first seed in the NL wild card race. Um, Right now, the stats according to ESPN, wild card opponents, the Marlins, uh, we have a 64.4% chance of advancing against the Marlins, and we have a 5.2% chance of making the World Series. Uh, Caesars odds of us making the World Series are plus 1,400. Predicted date of our last game is October 12th, so they're expecting us to get past this wild card series, but they're expecting us to lose against the Braves in the um, divisional series. However, we beat the Braves last year, right? So there's that. Not saying it's going to happen again, but we have the, the squad and the talent to do so, and we got even better from last year. The Braves improved in, in, in some ways as well, but we, we really got better, especially with the bullpen. That's what I like about this team coming into this playoff series. So you're talking about this roster right here, official roster, the infielders, Alec Boom, Bryce Harper, and Mundo Sosa, Bryson Stott, Trey Turner, Weston Wilson, you know, the big guy, you know, obviously Bryson Stott, who hopefully he's going to heat up again. Bryce Harper, who's been on fire. He's really turned it on. Trey Turner turned it on since June, July, whatever he got to stay in an ovation. Uh, Nick Castellanos in the outfield, been on fire. Uh, Dave, Jake Cave, Brandon Marsh, Marsh, um, great defensive center fielder. Christian Pache, Johan Rojas, and then Schwartz, obviously. He's going to be leading off. That's the lineup that's been set, and people have been critical of that, but, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully it works out. I would have, obviously, Trey Turner in that one spot, but 
Kyle Schwarber will be again leading off the playoff run from the leadoff spot. And then obviously JT behind the, the plate, and then Garrett Stubbs, Stubbs backing him up at catcher. And then let's go ahead and look at the pitching. And you have Zach Wheeler, who's in Cy Young form once again. Taiwan Walker, a huge acquisition from the Mets this offseason in free agency. Aaron Nola. And then you go ahead and start looking at uh, the left-handed pitchers, Ranger Suarez, who's probably going to be your fourth starter, third or fourth starter. And then Matt Stram uh, in the bullpen. You know, most notably left off of the starting roster is Lorenzen. You know, he had the he had the, either the no hitter or the perfect game. I don't know which one, but he's not on the roster. He really struggled down the stretch after a pretty brilliant start to his Phillies career. You know, I think he got traded here at the trade deadline, but he 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 was struggling. So we don't know what the reasoning was for that, but. That's where we're at now, but you have a pretty pretty solid bullpen now. They've really tightened up down the stretch between Sir Anthony Dominguez, um, Craig Kimball as your closer, and then your left-handers with Jose Alvarado and Gregory Soto. You know, Soto will be throwing gas, and then Matt Strams, you know. So you have a lot of good arms in that bullpen. So the Marlins, they always give us problems. I don't, they're, they're like the commander's to our Eagles. The Marlins are, they always play us tough. Even when they're, they don't have the best year, they play us like it's the World Series for whatever reason. So we have to come out tonight, establish dominance early on, get the bats alive, and then have Zach Wheeler stay in Cy Young form and then wipe out any illusions of grandeur or of winning this series that they, they may have had. Immediately, smack their ass in the face, and take their soul out of them. All three games are being played at CBP, Citizens Bank Park. So let's go out and establish dominance early on. So, you know, that that's what I have for this series going in. I have the, the Phillies winning this series, but they have to – don't let them sit there and tread water. Don't let them hang around, you know, don't, don't have these two two nothing games, you know, it's 2 nothing in the seventh inning, and they're just hanging around, hanging around, hanging around, because that's when teams like the Marlins decide to want to get back into a series, put up three runs out of nowhere, and 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 then they go, you know, c- come out and win a series against the Phillies and then go out and get crushed by the Braves. You don't want to allow that to happen. So come out and smack them down like you're supposed to, and so we can go ahead and move on and, and get a, a, a rematch against the Braves and do, do to them – this year, what we did to them last year and knocked their asses out of this playoffs. All right, so let me know what you guys think about this series coming up, and we'll be talking more about that. But I predict that the Phillies are going to win game one tonight with with um, our guy on the mound, Zach Wheeler. I think we will. And I think the Bats, they're hot right now, and they will stay hot. So that's my prediction. I have the, the Phillies winning game one, prob- probably in a, a low-scoring game, like like 3-1, to 4-1, to one, something like that. Um, we'll, 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 we will see what happens. Um, that's it for that. Um, I'll, po- I'll be posting this up on YouTube and then also go ahead and check out the video I posted up on the Canelo Charlo fight, the aftermath, if you're interested in that. And then I talked about some of the undercar fights as well, as well as what will be coming up at 154 pounds, as well as what, as what will be coming up at 168 between Benavidez and Boo Andre. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get my food, sit back and relax and get ready to watch what should be a Phillies win, and I hope to be celebrating after the game tonight. Uh, Stay safe, enjoy the games, and I will catch you on the next episode. Deuces.